Hello everyone, welcome to the video on protein synthesis inhibitor. In this video, I am going to explain about prokaryotic translation, how the protein synthesis happens and then the various protein synthesis inhibitors. Among them, I am going to explain in this video about amino glycosides and tetracyclines. This researcher Salman Waxman received a Nobel Prize for his work which led to the discovery of streptomycin streptomycin which has paved a, a major way for TB treatment. Now this is my channel if you like the video do subscribe. Let's get into the topic. Now before getting into protein synthesis inhibitors we need to understand how the protein synthesis occurs in bacteria. Let us see the various components. You have ribosomal RNA which is made up of 50S and 30S. In case of human beings it is made up of 60S and 30S. This is the biochemical difference between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. Now after that you have an mRNA which passes through these ribosomal units and then a tRNA which brings a new amino acid. Now the protein synthesis starts with an initiating amino acid that in case of bacteria it is formyl methionine. Now in ribosomes you have two sites are there P, P site and A site, peptidyl site and acceptor site. Now this incoming initiating amino acid will be there at P site and to this A site a new tRNA comes with a new amino acid. This amino acid comes according to the codon which is present on this mRNA. So according to that one a tRNA brings with a amino acid. Now to this amino acids the, far, the initiating amino acid will get transferred. This is known as transpeptidation step. Now after the transfer this ribosomal RNA moves in this direction on mRNA. So what happens? The transferred formal methionine and amino acid will be moved to P site and A site will be open. To this A site again a, a tRNA comes up with a new amino acid so according to the codon which is present on this mRNA and the process continue to take place. For more clear elucidation look at this diagram. The same thing 50S RNA and 30S RNA and you have an mRNA and incoming tRNA is there. So at this P site already you have amino acids are present. At this A site a tRNA comes with a new amino acid according to this codon. This is the first step and uh, the tRNA attaches this here with this new amino acid. Now after that these three amino acids will be transferred to to the top of this fourth amino acid a process known as transpeptidation. You can see this here it is transferred. Now after that the ribosome moves in this direction. You can see the C3 has come out to that C4 place the P site is there and the next site is empty. To this a new tRNA with amino acids comes here. So this is called as look at this translocation. So this step is translocation. Now understand the process, an initiating codon will be there and incoming tRNA comes with an amino acid. Now after that transpeptidation occurs by which the P sited amino acids will be transferred to A sited amino acid. After that ribosome moves it is called as translocation and the process continues. This is how the bacterial protein synthesis occurs. Now look at them, see you have 30s site and 50s sites are there right 50s and 30s sites are there. Now to this 30th sites amino glycosides and tetracyclines will bind and show their action. So these two classes the site of action is 30s ribosomes. Linozolid, chloramphenicol, lingosamide, clindamycin, maculoid all of them will be acting at 50s ribosome. The target site is 50s whereas for these two amino glycoside and tetracycline act on 30s ribosomes. Not only that, see chloramphenicol will inhibit this peptidyl transferase. I told you the transpeptide step that is inhibited by chloramphenicol. Whereas translocation is inhibited by lincomycin, clindamycin, maculates. So this is, these are all the various protein synthesis inhibitors and their site of action. Now let us say about amino glycosides. As the name indicates these are all glycosides. They are, you have two sugar units are bonded with the glycoside chain either two sugars or a sugar and a non-sugar. So you have various drugs are there the most important one is streptomycin. You can see there is a change in the name some of the drugs ends with MYCIN and some of them ends with MICIN. 
the difference is when it is obtained from streptomyces species they will end with mycin m y c i n whereas if the source is micromonospora if it is obtained from micromonospora it ends with m i c i n this is the name difference is due to the origin now among them kenamycin derivative is emicacin whereas sisomycin derivative is natalmycin so these two drugs are semi synthetic drugs all of them are remaining all are natural drugs now you have see amino glycosides are mostly they have got narrow spectrum antibodies that means they are effective against only few bacterial species the major therapeutic use is there for streptomycin which is used to treat tuberculosis tuberemia and bubonic plague so this is the major use paromycin sometime is used to treat amoebic dysentery caused by entamoeba histolytica and amikacin is also used as second line agent to treat tuberculosis for eye infections gentamicin is usually employed so these are all the therapeutic uses of various amino glycosides moving further when you see the mechanism of action see most of the protein synthesis inhibitors can stop the bacterial growth so they are considered as bacteriostatic agents but two of the classes like amino glycosides and streptogramins these are bactericidal in nature they will kill the bacteria amino glycosides are bactericidal agent how do they act they bind with 30s ribosomes and they cause three of the effects one they block initiation of protein synthesis they block further translation and premature termination and they incorporate a wrong or incorrect amino acids the effect of all these things is massive protein synthesis inhibition which will leads to bactericidal action remember only amino glycosides and streptogramins these two are the classes which will cause bactericidal effect in protein synthesis inhibitor classes so you can see how this amino glycosides bind with this 30s plus and and cause all this further effects now moving further now there are certain special features of amino glycosides are there one they exhibit concentration dependent kill that means the more the concentration the more the killing attitude is there in case of beta lactams like penicillin they exhibit time dependent kill that means you need to give the drug repeatedly so that they will exhibit the killing attitude that is the reason why penicillins will be taken two times a day even cephalosporins all of them will be taken in a day two or three times they are taken in case of amino glycosides they show concentration dependent kill so once dose per day is enough that is because they will be given in high concentration and once in a dose once in a day is enough the other one they show prolonged post antibiotic effect when the con see some of the antibiotics even after falling their effective concentration they show antibiotic action that effect is known as post antibiotic effect in order to show activity for any drug there need to be certain amount of effective concentration in the plasma even after falling from that effective concentration these drugs will show antibiotic effect it is known as post antibiotic effect amino glycosides will show this feature the other one they will get transported by oxygen dependent manner so in presence of oxygen amino glycosides will be taken into the bacterial cell that means anaerobics anaerobics in in case of anaerobic bacteria tetras, uh, amino glycosides can never get inside the cell so they cannot they cannot be used to treat anaerobic infection the other one see amino glycosides you have amine group is there lot of ionic charges are there so they cannot be orally absorbed now amino uh, when amino glycosides are continuously given bacteria will develop a kind of resistance and what is that pattern of resistance bacteria will release certain inactivating enzymes which will acetylate phosphorylate or adenylate amino glycosides so the amino glycosides will have this functional groups which cannot bind with the protein synthesis machinery of bacteria this is how bacteria develop resistance now coming to the toxicity or side effects 
Aminoglycosides will show majorly three types of toxicity nephrotoxicity, ototoxicity, neuromuscular blockade. Nephrotoxicity, nephrons, kidney damage will be there. Ototoxicity, hearing impairment may occur. Neuromuscular blockade, movement impairment, skeletal muscle blockade may occur. Now, the maximum and minimum, maximum effects are shown by these drugs. All the drugs will show these side effects to varying effects. Now, there is a note about spectinomycin. Spectinomycin is a drug which is related to aminoglycosides and it will show the similar mechanism of action like aminoglycosides. But the major use is it is used as a single dose treatment to treat Neisseria gonorrhea. So, penicillins are used to treat gonorrhea, but certain uh, uh, Neisseria gonorrhea will produce penicillin -ness so that penicillin will become ineffective. In that case, spectinomycin is the drug of choice. So, this is about aminoglycosides. Moving further, now let us see about tetracyclines. The name tetra means four. So, these four rings are there, hence they are known as tetracyclines. In fact, this four rings is known as naphthacene, naphthacene ring. And you have a carboxamide group is there. So, all the tetracyclines has got this kind of ring structure. The important ones are tetracycline, chlorotetracycline, doxycycline, minocycline and methacycline. But the important feature is you can see you have two adjacent oxygens are present here and they can generate a kind of partial negative charge. Because of this feature, anything which contains a positive charge like uh, uh, magnesium, aluminum which has got positive charges, they will form bonds with these oxygens. This is nothing but chelation. The best known example is calcium. Calcium will also form a bond like this. Because of this chelation, these drugs should not be taken along with dairy products like milk, buttermilk, curds. The, the calcium will chelate with this tetracyclines and it will not get absorbed. Even antacids, antacids contain aluminum and all these things. So, these aluminum will also form chelate with this tetracycline and it should not be taken along with tetracyclines. Now, when you see the mechanism of action, see, this is the 30th subunit, this is the 50th subunit, we have seen P site and A site. At the P site, you have a growing polypeptide chain is there. The incoming amine acid will come like this, amine acid TRNA. Now, it comes and binds with this A site. Now, tetracyclines will block this step. So, the incoming amine acid TRNA cannot come and bind at this site. So, this is how they will block protein synthesis and they cause protein synthesis inhibition. Now, the side effects of tetracyclines, because they can chelate with calcium, tooth enamel and bone growth will be affected. Both enamel and, and bone, both of them contain calcium. The repeated use of tetracycline may chelate with this calcium and calcium related problems may occur. Phototoxicity is seen with demiclocycline and doxycycline. Now, GI distress like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea and super infection leading to candidiasis or colitis is also seen. Vestibular dysfunction is observed with minocycline and uh, it, it may cause liver dysfunction during pregnancy at very high doses. Now, the other important thing, expired tetracyclines may cause Fanconi syndrome which is affecting nephron. The nephron damage will show lot of uh, problems and that is called as Fanconi syndrome. The major resistant pattern in case of tetracycline is by a flex pump. A flex pump will send out the tetracyclines outside from the bacterial cell to outside. So, the tetracycline will become ineffective. Now, these are all the major uses of tetracyclines. See, tetracycline can be taken in the form of IV and oral but it is largely being displaced, replaced by doxycycline. So, the most effective drug in this group is doxycycline. It is used to treat community acquired pneumonia, skin and soft tissue infection, urogenital chlamydia, uh, syphilis, anthrax, urolemia, Lyme disease and all kind of stuff. Tetracyclines are in fact broad spectrum antibiotic. They can be used to treat broad spectrum like Rickettsia, Chlamydia, Micromonospora, all these infections can be treated by tetracyclines. Again, okay? Minocycline is also used to treat skin and soft tissue infections, mycobacterial infections and nocodiasis. Now, there is a mention about Tigicycline. This is glycyl cycline, glycyl cycline, which is similar to tetracycline and mechanism of action is very similar to tetracycline. It also binds at 30S and blocks incoming TRNA. 
Now it is used to treat abdominal infection, skin and soft tissue infection, pneumonia. So this is about therapeutic uses of tetracyclines. Thank you for watching this video.